Hey there, Mr. Sutton here, bringing you the IM3 Honors Chapter 1, Quiz 3, Extra Practice Solutions on Transformations and Function Families. For this worksheet, they're giving us a function and we just have to graph it. Um, we're going to be using our knowledge of the function families. On this one, we're using the absolute value and some other questions also use the square root. Uh, and then we're just going to figure out how we have to move, stretch, uh, reflect, whatever, with that function. So my strategy is going to be the same. I'm going to start by writing out a, a table with three different points that are kind of representative of whatever function family I'm dealing with. Then I'm going to figure out how I need to modify the x and y values for each of those points. Then I'm going to do it and graph those out. Um, so for this first one, we have the absolute value function. So we have uh, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1. It graphs a nice little v initially if you were to graph these points out. So now I'm going to see how I need to modify those. This plus 3 inside means we're shifting right 3. And outside changes are uh, exactly what you expect, and they're up down. So we're going to go down 4. So inside is left right, opposite of what you expect. Outside is up down, exactly what you expect. Adding, subtracting is a shifting kind of thing. Uh, whenever we're multiplying, we're going to be stretching the function. And if we multiply by a negative, that reflects the function. So I think that covers just about everything we could end up doing. To this problem now, if we're shifting right 3, that means I'm going to be adding 3 to all the x values. And if I'm going down 4, I'm going to be doing y minus 4. So adding 3 to all my x values, negative 1 plus 3 is 2, 0 plus 3 is 3, and then 1 plus 3 is 4. Now I'm going to subtract 4 from all my y values, and I like to do one column at a time here, um, just so I can keep doing the same thing over and over again and not get kind of mixed up between my different things. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3, 0 minus 4 is negative 4, and 1 minus 4 is still negative 3. Graphing these out now, we have 2 comma negative 3 is right there, 3 comma negative 4, and 4 comma negative 3. And then just graph the absolute value v going through those points. And that's it. So we're going to be using the absolute value for the next three questions. And then after that, it's all square root. So we, we kind of do all of them at a time here. Um, so again, my parent table, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1. Now this time around, uh, we've got this negative 3 inside here. So we're going to be shifting right 3. And this 3 on the outside of the absolute value means I'm going to be stretching vertically, which is to say I'm going to be multiplying the y value by 3. So stretching, multiplying y value by 3 because of the 3 outside here, and shifting right 3 because of the minus 3 inside. So we've got for the, uh, the x's, if I'm going right 3, I have to do x plus 3. And now for the y's, I have to literally do y times 3 or 3y. So adding 3 to all my x values, so negative 1 is becoming 2, then we have 3, and 1 plus 3 is 4. Now we're going to multiply all the y values by 3, so 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 0 actually doesn't change, that's still 0, and 3 times 1 is 3. So now we've got 2 comma 3 up here, and then 3 comma 0, that's going to be over here, and then 4 comma 3 is right up here. And there's our absolute value going through all that. Just as a sanity check, uh, it's always good to look back and see if we did what we said we were going to do. We shifted right 3. That's good. We also stretched this thing vertically. Uh, notice those two points that would have been here were stretched up by 3. Number 3 on this handout is actually kind of similar to number 2 in a lot of ways. There is one key difference, though. We're still using this absolute value table, so we're going to keep going with that. Uh, but now for the negative 3 out here, since we have a negative, this is not only a stretch of 3 vertically, it is also a reflection vertically. So we're going to be multiplying y by negative 3, and that will have the effect of reflecting things over the x-axis. Uh, now also we have this x minus 4 inside here, so we're shifting right 4 because of that. So to sum it up, reflect and stretch. So multiply y by negative 3, and then shift right 4. So we've got x plus 4, if we're shifting right 4, and we got negative 3 times y this time. 
So adding 4 to all my x values, this is going to become 3, 4, and 5, so that's not so bad. Multiplying by negative 3 on all the y values, we end up with negative 3, still 0, that doesn't change, and negative 3 again. 3, negative 3, that's right over here. 4, 0 is there, and then we're going over 5, down 3, there we go, draw the absolute value. So we reflected and stretched for sure, and we shifted right 4. Now in terms of the order that these happen in, um, the, because reflecting and stretching is based off multiplication, this always happens before any shifting that's going to happen because that's based off addition subtraction. It's just basic PEMDAS affecting us here. So for number 4, we have another absolute value. So here's our absolute value table again. Negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1. Uh, this time around, negative 3 outside, that still means a reflect and a stretch of negative 3 on the y values, so that's actually the same as the last problem. But now we have a plus 2 outside, causing us to shift up by 2 after we've done our reflecting and stretching. So reflect and stretch, multiply y by negative 3, and then shift up 2. So for my table, uh, let's see, now my x values are not being affected at all. There's All this is is vertical stuff. So I'm just going to rewrite x here and that's going to be pretty easy to fill in. Now for my y's, remember uh, this multiplication has to happen before the shifting. So I'm going to write this as negative 3y plus 2. Notice that I don't put the y plus 2 in a parentheses. That would cause the shifting to happen first. So we've got the x values. Those are the same. Negative 1, 0, and 1. For the y values now, this is a kind of a two-stepper in my head I'm doing. So we have negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 3 times 0 is still 0, plus 2 is 2. Negative 3 times 1, it, we get the same thing we get up here. Negative 3 plus 2 is still negative 1. So we have negative 1, negative 1, 0 comma 2 is all the way up here, and 1 comma negative 1, there's my absolute value. So this time around, we reflected for sure and stretched, yep, and we also shifted up to after we did all that. For the next eight problems, we're going to be using the square root function and transforming that. So the parent table we're going to be using on the next eight problems is as follows. We have 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2. And the way I'm getting these parent tables, I'm just taking the most basic version of the function, which is just square root of x, and plugging in these x values. Square root of 0 is 0, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2, and if you're wondering why I skipped 2 and 3 in here, well, square root of 2 and square root of 3, those don't come out to nice uh, integers, so I'm just going to not worry so much about those. So, what am I doing here? We have this negative 1 happening outside the function. So that is basically a minus 1 happening, so we are going to be shifting down 1 on this, and that's the only change we're making. So writing my uh, new transformed table, my x values are unaffected because nothing's happening inside here with the x. The y values now, we're subtracting 1 from all those. So for my x values, I still have 0, 1, and 4. For the y values, now I have negative 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So graphing this all out, we have 0, negative 1, 1 comma 0, and 4 comma 1. And now the square root function, remember, starts at this endpoint here. Whatever used to be 0, 0 is going to be my endpoint. Um, so typically that's going to be the first entry in this revised table. So we start there. Uh, and then we go through the other way in a curved fashion with an arrow because this goes forever as you move in this direction. Um, so don't forget, we have an endpoint and an arrow. So let's move on to the next one now. For this next one, the only thing happening is this plus 4 inside. So after I write out my parent table, like I'm always going to be doing here, uh, I know that I'm going to be going left 4 because we're adding 4 inside. So it's opposite of what I expect. So I've got my new table. We're going to be doing x minus 4. y is unaffected. Nothing happening outside the square root function. So we just keep y the way it is. 
So all the x values minus 4 now. So 0 becomes negative 4. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And 4 minus 4 is 0. And now the y values stay the same. So 0, 1, and 2. Graphing it all out, we have negative 4, comma, 0, negative 3, comma, 1, and 0, comma, 2. And uh, negative 4, 0 is going to be our endpoint, so start there and go to the right. And actually, I'm going to extend that all the way to the edge of the graph because it feels weird otherwise, just kind of stopping it, even though there's an arrow. All right. For this square root function, we've got our uh, parent table here. The minus 2 inside means we are shifting right 2. Plus 5 outside means up 5. So we've got x plus 2 and y plus 5, shifting right and up. Uh, so adding 2 to all my x values, we've got 2, 3, and 4 plus 2 is 6. Adding 5 to all the y values, we've got 5, 6, and 2 plus 5 is 7. So putting those on the graph, we've got 2 comma 5, which is going to be our end point. Then we have 6, or 3 comma 6 here. And then we also have uh, 6 comma 7 all the way over here. There we go. Draw that square root. For number 8, this is a little bit busier than the last few questions. Still have our square root table to start things off with here. Um, but now, this time around, this 3 outside, we are... Ref, uh, stretching this thing by 3 vertically and plus 6 inside we have a minus 6 shift to the left and a minus 5 outside we're shifting down 5 so to recap all that stretching multiplying y values by 3 shifting left 6 and down 5 so when I set that up uh, left 6 is going to be x minus 6 and the stretch comes before the downshift vertically, so we have to write this as 3y minus 5 with no parentheses. So for x minus 6, uh, subtracting 6 from all these, we've got negative 6, negative 5, and 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Now we have 3y minus 5 for each of these, so 3 times 0 minus 5 is negative 5. 3 times 1 minus 5, that's 3 minus 5, is negative 2. And 3 times 2 is 6, minus 5 gives us 1. So we've got negative 6 comma negative 5 right there. Uh, negative 5, negative 2 is right there. And negative 2 comma 1 is up here. Negative 6, negative 5 is our end point, so starting there, going up through the other two points. And just to make sure we uh, did what we said we were going to do, we stretched vertically. This is more stretched out vertically than the original graph would be. And we also shifted left 6, down 5. On this next one, we have our uh, parent table. And the 3 outside is making a stretch vertically by 3. Minus 2 outside, we're shifting down 2. So I've got nothing happening to the x's. I'll just rewrite x in there. Uh, for the y's, though, we have 3 times y and then minus 2 for the shift. So all the x's are staying the same. We have 0, 1, and 4 still. Uh, now we have 3y minus 2 for everything else. So 3 times 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 3 times 1 minus 2 is 1. And 3 times 2 is 6 minus 2 gives us 4. So 0, negative 2 is our endpoint. Then we have 1, 1. 4 comma 4 and draw the graph through those. This next one is a little bit crazier. This 4 fifths outside means we're uh, stretching by 4 fifths, which is actually kind of a shrink when you think about it because it's less than 1 that you're going to be multiplying the y values by. Inside this is going to be a right shift of 1. Outside we have a down shift of 3. So parent table Stretch vertically by 4 fifths, shift right 1, down 3. So for the x values, I'm going to write x plus 1 to capture that. And for the y's, I've got 4 fifths times y minus 3, which is going to be all sorts of fun. Uh, but let's do the plus 1 for the x's first. So we have 1, 2, and 4 plus 1 is 5. Now we have 4 fifths times 0 for the y values minus 3. That's actually pretty easy. That's just negative 3. 
4 fifths times 1 is 4 fifths minus 3. Uh, so I'm really doing 4 fifths minus 15 fifths if I get a common denominator. 4 minus 15 gives me negative 11 over 5. Next up, we have 2 times 4 fifths. That's 8 fifths minus 15 fifths. 8 minus 15 is negative 7 over 5. So that was all sorts of fun to do in my head. Uh, let's graph these out now. This is also going to be interesting. We have 1 comma negative 3. That's the first one. That's our endpoint, so that's not too bad. Now for these other ones, we're going to have to estimate because my grid lines are going by 1's, not 1 fifths. So we've got 2 comma negative 11 over 5. Well, uh, that is really negative 2 and 1 fifth. So that's going to be right around here, a little bit past negative 2. Next up, we have 5 comma negative 7 over 5. That's equivalent to negative 1 and 2 fifths. So that's going to be somewhere between negative 1 and negative 2, closer to negative 1, right about there. And then start at the end point and draw that graph. This next one is a little less wild than uh, number 10. Still has a lot going on, though. We have a shift. Well, we have some shifting of, of left 5 and down 1 for those pluses and minuses. The 2 outside is stretching us vertically by 2. So parent table, stretch vertically, y values by 2, shift left 5, down 1. So we've got uh, x minus 5 for that first piece, and then 2 times y minus 1 for the rest of it. Subtracting 5 from everything, I've got negative 5. This is going to be negative 4. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. And then we have 2 times minus 1 for the y values. 2 times 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 2 times 1 minus 1 is just 1. And 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. So negative 5 comma negative 1 right there. We have negative 4 comma positive 1 up here. And then negative 1 comma 3 right there. Negative 5, negative 1 was our endpoint. So we start there and go through the other points. There we are. Uh, number 12 has some interesting things going on that we did not have before. So we have a vertical stretch of 2 because of this 2 outside the square root. So y value is getting multiplied by 2. Inside, though, we have a multiplier times x, and it's always opposite of what we expect, um, at least in terms of greater than or less than 1. So uh, rather than multiplying x by negative 1 half, and that negative is also giving us a horizontal reflection, uh, instead of multiplying by negative 2, we're going to multiply by negative 1 half, is what I'm trying to say here, um, the reciprocal of negative 2. And then this negative 3 out here, we're shifting down 3. So just to recap all of that after I write my parent table. We're stretching and reflecting, multiplying the x by negative 1 half, we're multiplying the y by 2, no vertical reflection, just a straight up 2 there, and then shifting down 3. So writing all this out, I've got negative 1 half times x, and I've also got 2 times y minus 3 for the stretch and the shift. So negative 1 half times all my x values, negative half of 0 is just 0, so that's pretty easy. Negative half of 1 is negative 1 half, also not so bad. Uh, negative 1 half times 4 is going to be negative 2. Now I have 2 times y minus 3 for all these. 2 times 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 2 times 1 minus 3 is negative 1. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3 is 1. So 0, negative 3 is our endpoint. Negative half, negative 1, which is roughly here, is the next point. And then we have negative 2 comma 1 up here. Now, for the last like seven questions, we started with the leftmost point and went to the right. Here, again, the endpoint is 0, negative 3. So it's this point we have to start with and go to the left forever now through those other two points. And there's our new graph. So that's it for this review of transformations of functions. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, Mr. Sutton signing off.